to me, an open lab is a place where people can meet and do the kind of research that can't happen anywhere else. Artists and scientists and technologists getting together and making new tools and making new kinds of research, not necessarily at businesses, not necessarily at universities, but actually in the streets, in the kitchen, in the informal spaces, and try really unusual new experiments. Think of it as like an antidote to traditional closed labs where stuff that's found out is all done behind closed doors. The guts of the thinking is actually laid out for them to understand. So there are pieces that they can interact with, uh, but there are also a lot of instructions in, for example, how to make their own microscope, how to hack a toy car so that it's self-driving. We want to communicate the do-it-yourself mentality. Uh, we have here the cheapest radio-controlled car. We have an Arduino here, a motor shield and some cables and the line sensor and that can make already the self-driving car. It's in a way to demystify technology. Open it, break it, see if we can make it our own. This is really interesting, making drones from just uh, normal materials that you'd find every day. I'd be really interested in going to some of the events that are taking place during the next month. Mediators, based in Science Gallery, are going to be working in the open shop, uh, showing you how to use and build some of the tools that the other labs have brought with them. ArtScience PLR is a public laboratory and it's an open space so uh, you see a lot of workshops happening which teach people how to make tools to engage with science. Nobody would have thought of like, hey, what does this plant sound like? So how about make a plant theremin and find out for yourself. I was looking at this microscope that what you're looking at, it will give you the sound of it. There's a sense of humor in it. It's fun. Random String of Emotions is a piece that uses uh, emotion recognition. As you can see, the expressions that the actress is making don't really make sense emotionally to us. Uh, and likewise, a computer has quite a hard time figuring out what she's trying to express as well. I like the connection, the idea that everything is connected in a network, but not of similarities, of differences. I would hope that the visitors could see what a, what a wonderful field art and science uh, can be, and whatever your background is, you, if you have the interest, you can enter it and, and you can be part of it. The trees in the boxes, they are actually not uh, just regular Christmas trees, they are cloned Christmas trees, so it's actually the same specimen, just in 12 different versions. And these trees are networked, so it's hooked up to a satellite, NASA satellite, which looks into a space weather. The yeast art, that was really cool. Having studied like that in college and seen that in labs and stuff, seeing it turned into art was pretty unreal. Like every time I do an exposure, the outcome is different. This, I think the possibilities of uh, the yeast species is enormous. It's like there's so many to discover. The oscillator was our favorite. That was very hypnotic. Seeing how the vibrations transform into an image, uh, it really fascinated me. Really nice. It builds a sense of agency in our public that really enables them to engage in a different way. If visitors came to this exhibition and they want to start their own open lab, that would be an amazing success. If you have an idea, if you have a question, come ask us, let's build something together.